so can you give us a flavour of what the kind of things are that your sector group does? Okay, so our sector group does range from insurance, finance, it may be consultants, it may be large businesses, it may be small businesses. Um, in the office, outside of the office, it cover a wide range, really. And Tracy, can you tell me, I don't know, why, why does your sector group exist? Um, our sector group exists because we found that there was a need or people before me did the financial services group, but we found there was a group of people that were really interested in safety. Safety was their full time job. We were all doing similar things and it was really good network to connect with IOSH and also to share experiences and benchmarking. We were all doing roughly the same things and it's good to just share your experience so that you don't reinvent the wheel and some people can recommend certain things rather than others. It's just good to talk through problems or issues that you're facing at work. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. It's uh, Health and safety can be a somewhat lonely job, can't it? So having that network and people around you that understand the world that you live in, you work in is really, yeah. really important. Brilliant. So I suppose that leads really nicely into how can IOSH members engage with the group? So IOSH members can engage with the group through LinkedIn or through IOSH. Um, we are going to do some intro videos. I've done one and we're going to do some for the other committee members so that people can contact them directly if they want to, if they want to get involved. How important is it to have members in the group and involved in the group for you? It's really important because we want to get a wide range of hazards and jobs um, and just to get the debate going on certain things. So we were all interested in certain things. Um, it's, it, the bigger the group, the better so that we can get and also across regions. So not just UK, but we want to have more of a global approach to other countries about how they do things and how we can learn from each other. Fantastic. So for anybody that is interested in joining the sector group, what can they expect from you guys? They can expect webinars, they can expect networking events, um, they can expect practical guidance, they can expect, we're going to try and advertise um, other IOSH events, so even if they're not part of that sector, there may be relevant things, topics like fire, for instance, or Legionella. Um, they can expect a lot of events from us, probably not in-person ones yet, but most from the survey results, people really are interested in webinars. So it is important that we advertise those and get people to know that they're happening and people attend and they do join in. And obviously we want any ideas from members or people to let us know what would they like to see in the future. Brilliant. I think it's so important for us to really get hold of our the members in our groups and, and ask them what they want and make sure that the committees are being led by them. It's really important, isn't it? And yeah. I suppose the final question is, what's the process for anybody who's interested in joining your sector group? Um, anybody that wants to get involved with our group, they can look at our LinkedIn page where we're trying to put um, frequent communications on there. As I said, we will introduce our committee members with a video coming shortly so they know who the actual committee are and they exist. And there's also, you can get in contact directly with IOSH if you want to join our group. Fantastic. So for anybody listening, that's IOSH.com or you can drop an email to networks at IOSH.com as well. 